Okay. So this is the Ohio Writers Guild, and every month we get together and we get to interview a different author. And so we get so excited because every author is so different. Um, the reasons they write are different. The way they write is different. And I just get so excited mm -hmm. to, to talk to all these different authors. Now, we're having a great time tonight because Sasha is with us and she does romance and it's Valentine's Day. Ooh, so, I mean, perfect. you know, this was meant to be. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. Um, I met Sasha on another one of my meetups. And uh, when I found out she was an author and a romance author, and I gave her some dates, this was the one that just worked out for her. And she's a romance writer. So, I mean, hey, you know, <laughs> yeah. it, couldn't, it couldn't be more perfect. So I appreciate that. Now, I also am a passive income coach, and I have an online international academy, and one of my lanes is the Ohio Writers Guild. And so most of you found us either through our Facebook group or through our meetup group. And as the Ohio Writers Guild, as the facilitator, uh, my job is to, of course, facilitate, um, you know, our meetup here on Zoom once a month by interviewing another author. But I also am in the process of putting together a course on how to get published. And then um, I have a mastermind where folks can can join. It's twenty five dollars a month. And it's a membership site and you can join that and we will actually help you go through the writing and publishing process. Now, I'm brand new. I'm a newly published author myself. And so I certainly don't have all the answers. And that's why as a mastermind, we really, we really invite you to join, especially if you have some background. And I know some of you, I'm looking in the, in the chat and in the participants box, I know some of you are definitely published and are a lot more knowledgeable on the subject than I am. And we would love for you to be in our mastermind so that we can all work together because the mastermind, uh, again, the, the tide raises all the ships. And so um, there's plenty of room for everyone and we want to include you. Now, if you do join and decide you want to join the mastermind group, you do get a second mastermind at no charge and there's several to pick from. And so if you join, just send me a little message. Um, you can go to kathybenner.com. You see my name there in my little Hollywood square. Um, so you can go to kathybenner.com and just send me a note uh, in the contact me page that you joined and that you would like to have a second mastermind. And um, I can let you know what those are. A lot of our folks, they'll either do a build a better business because they want to build products and services around their book, or they'll join the how to monetize a blog because uh, they, they love to write. So anyway. So there's lots to choose from. So I just wanted to tell you that little bit about me, and then I'm going to uh, hand it over to Sandy. She is my co-host, my co-mod on, on this, and also on the course, and also on the mastermind. And I'm going to let her tell you all about um, one of our tribe trips that is actually hers, where we are going to participate and join her in her writer's retreat. So I'm going to let her tell you about that. So Sandy, over to you. Hi there, I'm Sandy Kachurik, longtime uh, lover of English. I taught high school English for a very, very, very long time and then got into my own uh, personal professional writing. And I direct Into the Springs Writers Workshop in Yellow Springs, Ohio. It's an in-person meet. It's always the first, full, first weekend in August. It's August 4th through the 6th. And it's at the Mills Park Hotel, a very lovely, lovely setting. And if any of you have ever heard of or know of Yellow Springs, Ohio, it is one of the most unique little villages you'll ever find. And it's worth coming down for that in addition to all the writers there. And the folks who live in Yellow Springs who have put their name on the map for being fantastic writers and comedians. It's the home of Dave Chappelle, if any of you have heard of him as a quite the comedian and a thoughtful person. Anyway, we're there. I run it in an interesting way in the fact that it's not a, a workshop in which you have five or six different choices per hour. We all share the same space and we listen, even my guests this year and as every year, uh, sit together for the whole weekend. So if questions come up that you have that, oh, I wished I would have asked that or too shy to ask at the time, um, 
they're there. They're there. We have lunch together on Saturday in the banquet hall, as well as during all the sessions. My featured guests this year are Jane Friedman. And by all means, if you have not heard of Jane, please consider looking her up. Uh, she's going to give us the whole weekend, which is a very unique experience. Uh, she is all there is to know about marketing and publishing a book. She's going to go from pointing out how you can improve your author website to let's look at the real nitty gritty of both traditional and um, independent publishing and things in between, which one is working for you or which one would work better for you. And she's talking about, um, we're gonna have a piece in which both my guests are gonna listen to you if you wish to, read the first few sentences of your work and they could tell how effective is it going to be to an agent, to a reader, to an editor? And um, my other guest is Jason Sanford. Uh, he is very much well known for his science fiction work. And he's written all across the country, all across the world. He's had a British magazine focused strictly on his short stories. That's his very much his moniker are short stories, but he recently uh, published a novel and went to the top with it and was a finalist as with all his work in uh, some of the top science fiction awards, the Hugo and the Nebula and the Philip K. Dick Awards. Um, he's also gonna be sharing, he knows something that's called Patreon. And if you haven't looked that one up either, see there's so much new stuff that you would just love. Uh, what do you do while you're waiting for that book to come out? or waiting to finish that book? Is there, a, is there a short story you can send? Where do you send it? What, how do you submit short stories? Uh, Patreon pays you. Um, you can subscribe to a Patreon and have folks buy into you and send you a couple bucks a month to a lot of money a month. And you supply them maybe with a chapter or a design or something. So it is one chock full weekend, Saturday night, open mic readings. You have five minutes to read something from something you've written. And it's social, there's a, a bar and there's a non-alcoholic drinks as well. And it's just the celebration of you and the celebration of, of writing and what you write. Uh, just a wonderful weekend. I'll, I'll post into the Springs writersworkshop.com in the chat and check it out. I would love to have you look at the website. You register for everything there. And especially our host hotel has a few conference room rates. Now, mind you, it's it's not a corporate hotel. It's a personally owned hotel by two gentlemen. So the cost is a little higher. But when you look at the cost of a lot of workshops and you think, oh, my God, Gosh, from Friday evening to Sunday morning, I get the attention of these two incredible authors. Well, it's kind of worth the, every, all the price. But there's a lot of other gorgeous places to stay around the area, too. So take a look at it. I'd appreciate it if you did. And if you have questions, by all means, my email address, sandy at into the springs uh, writers workshop dot, uh, at gmail.com or dot com, and I'll, I'll answer them for you. Thanks. Thanks, Kathy. I love it. I love it. I didn't get to go last year because we were traveling and we were out of state during uh, the writer's workshop. So this year I jumped in right away. So if you're interested, if you're a writer, uh, it's going to be the place to be Yellow Springs in August, first weekend in August. So mark, mark your calendar, save the date. Now let's talk about Sasha. Am I saying your first name correctly? Is it Sasha? Yeah. Okay. So she began writing at an early age as a way to escape finding safety and comfort in the character she created. Now, not much has changed today. So even several books under her belt, Sasha still finds herself engrossed in the lives of her characters and the stories that they help bring to life. Now for Sasha, it's not just writing stories that are diverse and relatable to all, but more so telling her story. So it's through her personal journey that people not only learn more about Sasha as a person, but also how and why she writes the characters and the stories that she does. As she continues her journey, Sasha's goal is to help others find their way, whether through their, her own story or the characters she creates, allowing people to find com commonality and connection in a world where most feel completely alone is more than a passion. It is her purpose. Good. Good, good, good. So welcome, Sasha. Wow. 
I love that introduction. Um, okay. She actually has 12 novels out there. Oh, you go, girl. <laughs> I, I'm so proud of myself that I'm published once. <laughs> but hey, I've got great ideas. Yeah, that's why I, I can't wait to talk to Sasha because I, in my retirement, my retirement plan is, and Mark will tell you, I've said this for years, I want to write mystery novels. <laughs> so, so we'll see. We'll see. Mm -hmm. That's my goal. So how... Sasha, how did you, or how do you make time to write 12 novels? Um, actually I wrote them in a year. So like between oh 20 <laughs> and 2015, <laughs> I wrote all 12 novels. I have 10 published, but yeah, I completed 12, um, novels during that time. Um, it was like a freak bug of like just yeah. creativity that just needed to get out and so I did ignore it and just wrote and that really? was it so um I've been slowly publishing over time like re-editing and like you know just doing yeah. all the things that you need to do in order to for it to make sense to other people but um yes yeah, so I've been doing that since 2015 um and just going through that so yeah wow oh my goodness now Tell us a little bit, is this a series or is, does each book stand alone? Um, yeah, each book stands alone except for um, one. So like one of the books that are published, um, Crazy Love has a sequel called The Decision. So like that, okay. but everything else is standalone. They're, you know, different stories, different characters, you know, yeah, they're all different. Okay, so <laughs> how, how do you describe what your books are about then? Um, I generally, I mean, they're romance based, you know, obviously that's like the premise, but, um, you know, my characters always have to like overcome something, whether it's internal or external. Um, you know, I like to make sure that they evolve, um, through the story as they're finding love, you know, so whether that's, um, you know, understanding themselves or, whether that's having to deal with like some external things that happened to them, some trauma. Um, I try to make them as real as possible to people so that they can, you know, the reader can relate and say, oh, I went through that, you know, and see how that character um, evolves and overcomes that obstacle. So, yeah. Well, that is definitely interesting. Um, Tell us just a little bit about your history leading up to writing that first book. Uh, I, you mentioned in your, your bio that you wrote at an early age. Um, were you writing short stories? I mean, you know, how, how did you finally come around to writing an actual novel? Um, yeah, like I wrote, um, I started writing, I would say I probably about seven or eight. And okay. um, I had a friend of mine, um, we would write songs and perform them in church. So, um, okay. And then we started, um, you know, writing little plays and things like that. And then, um, like, I ventured off and just started writing um, poems, little short stories. Um, I think now people call them fan fictions. So, like, I wrote <laughs> things like that. Um, I wrote music myself because I used to sing. So I, I performed um, original songs um, years ago. But um, then I just, you know, turned, like, small stories into like novels um you know I wanted to have like a longer um journey for like the characters and um make the stories more evolved so um you know that that's kind of my evolution in okay <laughs> like, yeah, novels, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> well well Teresa is giving you some some hand claps and and Dan commented he says I have my whole story outlined, my characters defined, extensive notes, et cetera. He said, I've written the first 15 pages. He said, but I find myself spending hours editing and rewriting instead of moving forward, even when at my most motivated. He said, how do you plow through a first draft? He said, it seems to me that it's related to confidence and focus. So as a side question, how do you find the confidence basically to put yourself out there to just write? And he um, says, thanks for being here. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, that was difficult um, because any like creative knows like when you put something out there, it's an extension of yourself. So you're basically sharing like a pieces of yourself with the world. And so, no, that was very, very difficult um, to do. But as far as like the writing, it was more of like, I don't know, I hate to say like trance-like 
Um, because I honestly, until I went back and read what I wrote, I didn't realize that's what I wrote, if that makes sense to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was just, I, you know, I would suggest just write instead of like going back and reading mm -hmm. and editing, like, you know, like those 15, just get it all out. And then once you're like, you're like, oh, okay, I've got this all out, then maybe go back. Um, but not like, just like micro miniature writing, I guess, if that yeah. makes sense. No, that's um, perfect. perfect. Yeah. I think we call that in flow when we're writing and we're not paying attention to the, to the grammar or to the punctuation. Yeah. We're just in flow. We're just getting the story out there. So you're saying that's kind of how you wrote these. You just got in the groove and just, just let it come out. I did. I just, I just wrote and, um, you know, let whatever was in my mind, um, you know, um, in my heart and my thoughts, you know, I just let it go. Um, and then again, like I said, like I went back through and I'm like, I wrote that. Okay. <laughs> okay. I was like, so it was like an out of body experience. <laughs> this is what I would consider it. <laughs> All right. Now, um, how do you physically do your writing? Do you do you type? Do you write longhand in a tablet? Do you talk into your phone or into a recorder? How do you actually get all of the writing out of you onto paper? Um, I type. Um, okay. I used to um, do longhand. Um, I used to, I'm aging myself, use the word processor. <laughs> um, um, but now like, I, you know, I just use like a document and just um, start typing. Um, I've worked as an admin for many years. So obviously okay. my speed is quite fast. Um, sometimes my thoughts are a little faster than the typing, but for the most part, I'm, I'm good with that. But I do find if I'm not at a, um, like a, a, a way where I could type things out, then like if I'm at a restaurant or like, you know, somewhere I might put something on a napkin or like, you know, jot little notes um, here and there. But yeah, for the most part, typing. Okay. So Elizabeth says even the first notes or draft, even the first time out, you're typing it. I just type. I don't really do like outlining. Um, okay. that, um, now I do like, I'll do research on um, like if my uh, character has a certain career that I need like a little bit background information or if it's a location that I need background information then I'll do that um, but as far as like drafting or outlining or like I just write I, I really just write okay wow my hat is off to you <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm not quite that talented. So, uh, but yes, yes, it's so good to, to talk to you about how your process works for you. Now, what made you decide to actually write romance? How did that come about? Was that a decision? Yeah, yeah okay. I think um, uh, it's, I've always loved romance. Um, like I, I love creating characters. I love like putting them together um, you know, creating relationships. Um, so I, I don't know. I just, I'm just a romantic at heart. So, um, I like to do little things for, you know, the people that I care about so that, I mean, it's just innate in me. Um, you know, I've dabbled in a little bit of like mysteries or like the, um, I would say fantasy stories, but nothing, you know, that I've put out there in the world as of yet, but, um, I don't know. Romance just speaks to me. Like I just love the characters and and love itself, you know, um, because there's so many, I think, facets to love and being in love. Um, you know, I look at at a love story as um, like those two people connecting on a level that's you know higher than just basic. So I like to put that on paper and you know kind of explore that. So. Now, with 12 novels under your belt, where do you get all of the plot lines for all of these characters and character ideas? Not only character ideas, but the plot lines, the, the storyline. Where does all of that come from? Actually, I dream about them. Um, okay. <laughs> I do. Um, like, yeah, especially during that time that I was writing, um, a lot of things, they came in dreams. Um, and then I know one month I wrote, I was writing two novels at the same time because I was just getting that much information. But a lot of times I'll dream about my characters 
um, and I'll dream about like um, their lives, you know, because for me, I have to create that character first before I can kind of create yeah. the plot. I have to understand who they are um, before I can kind of create the story. But yeah, everything comes in dreams and then it just flows. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. I, I love that. Who is your book primarily written for? Who, who is your, your main reader, do you think? Um, I would say like young adult to um, like older adult. I mean, obviously not like teenagers because there's, you know, some adult themes. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, um, uh, oh, it looks like Teresa's leaving. Bye, Teresa. I'll see you I, soon I, in a I couple months. That. Yep. Love Teresa. Um, yeah, but I think, yeah, they're just, um, like young adults, I think. I mean, I've had some teenage issues like read my books, but I think because of the content, content and the, um, uh, a lot of the issues that the adults are going through, um, you know, trauma or like, um, you know, there's a book where, you know, it's a battered spouse. I mean, those are adult. Mm -hmm things so um you know i would say young adult to to older adult yeah okay elizabeth says uh, not to take this wrong but she said it may sound a little bizarre but if you had any psychic experiences and she says no she's not crazy <laughs> no i'm not crazy oh no you're not crazy no no, no she said she's not crazy she's oh, just no, wondering if you've had some psychic no. experiences she's, yeah yeah um yeah i'm empathic anyway um naturally so um you know i feel the feelings of others <laughs> yeah yeah um yeah oh, oh yeah because of the transits um yeah I I probably probably yeah there are a lot of times that um like I do a lot of like speaking to people whether it's at the grocery store or like at an event um and a lot of times like I'll say things to them and not really like I won't consciously know but it's what they need to hear at that time mm -hmm. so I just say that you know God or whoever is speaking to me, giving them what they need at that time. So yeah, I totally, yeah. Mm -hmm. Not crazy, Elizabeth, no. Interesting. <laughs> you're good. Very interesting. If you could say that your novels had a main message, what would the main message be? Um, besides, you know, um, love and love um, doesn't really have um, a particular label or, you know, um, I don't know. I mean, that for sure. And um, generally, you can overcome most things, you know, um, whether that's alone, or, you know, with another person or people supporting you. Um, a lot of times people feel like um, their lives are hard. Um, you know, they you go through things in life, and you feel like you could never come out of it. Like, you know, you're just down for the count and that's it. Um, I think, you know, with my characters, you know, they fight, you know, they fight and, um, you know, for love, they fight for, you know, their own stability. So I think, um, you know, that's an important message, you know, don't, don't give up. Like we all go through things, but it's the strength to overcome those things. Mm -hmm. And then to be able to help other people with, you know, your testimony, basically, you know, this is what I've overcome and you can too. Um, you know, obviously everybody's life's different, but maybe being able to give them a word of encouragement. Um, so that's kind of the way I look at it. Okay. And so, and, and so why would you say your message is so important? Is it, is it for that reason to just not give up no matter what? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, because that's, um, you know, that's real, you know? Um, yeah, my books are not, they're fiction, but I like to make the stories and the characters as relatable as possible. You know, these are like, I want to make them real so that people can relate to them. They can see themselves in the story. You know, this is me, I'm going through this, you know? And then they can say, okay, I can do this because this character, you know, is able to do this. So I can do this. Um, so yeah, not, not giving up, you know, just like pushing on and, um, you know, being strong in that. 
All right, I'm going to put Sasha on the on the the hot seat for just a minute. So I'm going to let her think just a minute on this one. Give us a sample of one of the scenarios of one of your favorite characters mm -hmm. and what situation were they in and how did they overcome it? Just to give right. us an idea of 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 how your mind works when you're writing these stories. Okay. Um, okay, one of my characters, um, she, um, in my book, Love Un Undercover, um, my main female character, um, her name is Renee, her name is Gloria Renee, but um, she goes by Renee. She is an FBI agent and white collar crime, and she has been for uh, 10 years. Um, but she dealt with a lot of trauma as a child. So her mother was murdered. Um, when she was 11 um, and then her father abandoned her so she basically raised herself um, in and out of foster care um, she became emancipated at 16 and just pretty much raised herself so she um, was very like self-reliant very closed off um, to the world love any any of that like there was it was just her um, she ended up the premises they she goes undercover with one of the male agents um and of course they form a relationship and he he actually helps her to understand that um you know family isn't always blood um he helps her to open up to trust and um to believe in herself and believe in love so um you know, having that loss. And then she's able to um, deal with her father who wants to come back into her life because he's dying, um, who wants to like apologize and be a part of her life. But she understands that she doesn't need that anymore. You know, she doesn't need that validation. She just needs what she has right now because she's strong enough to make it on her own. So she's able to forgive him, but she doesn't need to have that relationship. So. Oh, nice. So many messages in there. Wow. Yeah. I just have to sit for a second and take that all in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love that. And and these stories just you 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 dream them. Have have any of these, and, and, I, and this is a loaded question, have any of these actually been part of your history? Or are all of these stories because you've either seen them, heard them, dreamed them? from the outside in when you write? Well, um, my mom always says that the characters are extension of me a little bit of, of my personality, but I would say um, in Crazy Love, um, Camille, the main character, she's closest to me. Um, she lives with mental illness, like a, a host of mental illnesses and, and so do I. So um, as far as like her, um, the things that she goes through on a daily basis, um, that's more like I relate to her quite a bit and why she does the things that she does. Like I understand her the most. I think most people don't who've read those books. Like they generally like get mad at her, but um, for the decisions that she makes, but I understand them because I know why she has to make those decisions. So like anyone who would live with mental illness um, would understand her a little bit more and why she does what she does. So when you wrote the books, um, was that one earlier on in the series or was that one later in, in your? Um, that one books? was later. Yeah. Um, crazy okay. love and the decision. Like there was so much going on in that. I had to write a sequel <laughs> plus people asked for it because I kind of left it yeah. open. Okay. So, um, okay. Yeah. I left a cliffhanger. So yeah, people didn't like that. <laughs> so I did have to finish the story, but, um, yeah, no, that was later. I, I think it was probably maybe like seven, book seven, eight, mm -hmm. somewhere okay. around there. Okay. Yeah. Wow, this has been so informative. I, I just love how your mind works and, and you put all of these stories together. We have one other author that's on our list that we get to interview later on, and she's she's written something like 20 right in a row. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
And hers <laughs> has one main character throughout all of the oh, books, wow. okay. whereas yours has different main characters, except for the that one book there of, of Crazy Love. But the rest of them are different characters. Hers mm -hmm. is the same character and, and hers is based on herself. And wow. then she has created all of these fictitious stories around mm -hmm. her, her, basically her own character. Nice. And so it, it's very interesting to see the different styles and the different ways that folks get their ideas and the way they put these yeah. stories together. So this has been wonderful. I love talking with you. Um, what plans do you have for the future, Sasha? Um, well, Sylvia. I see Sylvia has joined us. Thank you okay. for joining us. Uh, you can chat with us in the chat, Sylvia. Thank you. Hi, Sylvia. Um, I have quite a few things <laughs> in the works. Like, um, you know, I still, I'll still do like um, events, um, book fairs, things like that. Um, okay. I know there's, there's a few coming up because I know um, Teresa has one. And so I did hers last year. And so like, I'll do it again with her. Okay. Um, I, I saw that. And so for those of you that are listening, um, yes, one of the gals that was on the call, she had to jump off. She, she is in charge of a book fair coming up. And uh, so you get in touch with me if you want more information on that uh, or Sasha, Sasha can give you information on that as well. So yeah, um, so what else do you have coming up? Um, I also like, um, I own a baking business. So I do, I bake um, mainly around like the holiday season. I do like baskets and things like that, but I've opened up my site for um, like all year round. So um, somehow like I incorporate those two together. So usually if I do an event, I'll have some baked goods with my books and vice versa. Okay. Um, so there's, you know, plans in the works. I don't like to like divulge a lot until things manifest, but, um, you know, just look out for that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Now, how busy are you on a regular basis? Do you try to do like book signings and book fairs? Do you try to do a certain number a week or a month? Um, for some of our authors that are maybe hasn't haven't published yet, how often do you try to put yourself out there? Um, I am so bad at like marketing. <laughs> I am not like out there like uh, I'm not a people for social media. No, I I'm so bad okay. at that. But um, I try to do them when I can. So um, like last year I did a lot. So it was almost like every three weeks I was doing something I was traveling or doing something okay. so um I'm trying to like slow down a little bit and maybe do like quarterly like a bigger you know mm -hmm. event and then I'll do like interviews like um I was just interviewed for a, a magazine that came out uh, last week so um you know I'll do like smaller things I'll do podcast magazines thing like just slowing it down as far as travel mm -hmm. and and being out there um, because I really want to focus on, you know, building my brand and um, getting that um, brick and mortar thing set up <laughs> for to have both um, the baking and the and the books. So um, we'll see. We'll see what the future holds. But I mean, I'm people request my time all the time. So like, if it's something that I feel strongly about, then I'll do okay. that. Well, and Elizabeth says it seems like many writers don't like the marketing part of it or the marketing piece and she can relate. I get that. Yeah, I get yeah. that. And, and for me with my online Academy, I do have building a better business and I have several authors in that group and I am working with them on doing some marketing that doesn't like take a whole ton of time, but it does get them some exposure. So, so there's some ways to do that. So I get that, but yeah, that's not everybody's favorite and it does take some time. It is, I mean, because, you know, by nature, you know, most creatives are like introverted, you know, and we're more focused on that creativity as opposed to like the running of the business. Now, you know, I've been behind the scenes in business for so long, you know, it's just innate in me. I know how to do it, but it's just, you don't want to, you know, lose that creative piece, mm -hmm. you know, that creative mindset that you have because, you know, that's who you are. So it, yeah, it's difficult. Mm -hmm. Yep. I understand that. Yes, I absolutely understand that. So if anyone in the audience has any questions, I know Teresa had to jump off. I think uh, Harvey had to jump off. I'm not sure who I know Elizabeth is still with us. Sylvia has joined in. So thank you so much. If you have any questions for Sasha, uh, put those in the chat. And Sandy, how about you? Any conversational questions that you have for Sandy that come to mind as she's chatting? No, I I like how comfortable you are as a writer. 
Uh, you know how your process works. You know uh, probably what is not the comfortable parts, which is the business end or the social media end. But I like that. I And I'm sure your characters probably reflect that too. But um, I do understand the dream part. I remember my first book was a dream. I like mermaids. So I was always daydreaming about mermaids. I go, oh, that's going to be my first novel. <laughs> a page and a half later, I was done with the story. I thought, whoa, that felt a lot longer. And much like some of the uh, some of the folks in the audience are like, okay, now what do I do now? <laughs> so, oh, wow. I, I just, I'm just impressed on how you're pulling out a mm -hmm. single character you know, mm -hmm. every book. And that's just amazing. Uh, just Thank amazing. You. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I, I think that. it's amazing that she's not outlining where she wants the story to end up. She's letting the story kind of yeah. just take on a life of its own, yeah. um, which is a, a genius on one hand and so scary on the other. <laughs> now, when you've ended up with the story, have you ever had to go back and think, I need to come up with a more solid conclusion or... Does it automatically um, flow that way for you? No, I mean, usually not. Like when I'm going back through, like a, it's more of like, okay, this sentence didn't make sense. So let me like fix that. But um, no, like I'm usually satisfied with the ending, you know, other than like when I told you like the crazy love where I kind of left a cliffhanger. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, I knew I needed to go back. You know, people didn't have to tell me. <laughs> I knew I needed to have her make a decision that we could follow and understand. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, no, like I, I'm usually fine with how things end. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, yeah. I don't know how yeah. I do it. It just and Happens. after, and I would think, and, and no, I don't think the answer is yes, absolutely. The process is easier because you've written so many books. Mm -hmm. It still is a struggle to get them to sing the way you want them to, but it does help having written more than one or two, I'm sure. But, uh, and you probably even know, oh, I'm going to have to go back and redo that part. But so. yeah, I usually do. And, you know, my mindset is like, you know, yeah, I've, I've written all these books, but you know, everybody is not going to like every book. Right. You know? So it's like, there's something that, you know, like Sandy, you'll be like, oh, I like this book, but I don't like, I didn't relate to this book mm -hmm. much. You know, it would be the same with Kathy. Kathy might've liked the book that you didn't like, but then, you mm -hmm. know, didn't like the book that you like. So I always say, you know, there's a little something out there for everybody. That's kind of, oh. I want to make sure that. Sure, 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 know. sure. I love it. Sasha, how can folks get in touch with you and how can they actually buy your books? Um, well, um, I have the ebooks on Amazon. Um, you can go to my website for um, the paperback, which is www.swansongbooks.com and that's swan with two N's. Um, and um, I'm on social media under uh, swan song for books. Um, and that's on Instagram and um, Facebook. Um, I don't know, like social media is hard Great. for me. It's so hard for me. I'm <laughs> so it's Swan Song for the, the number four book. The number and four. I'm sorry, the number that's, four. Yeah. And that's on Instagram and on Facebook. Okay. On Facebook. Yeah. And I try to keep a, up as much as I can. Um, but like you, people can message me um, anytime. Um, there's a um message in my on my website where you can contact me and it'll just go like straight to my email um so i can um you know if you have any questions or um and then if you order from my um, website those books come directly from me so okay. i generally sign them and you know package them okay. nicely and all of that so yeah very nice very nice and that's on the swansongbooks.com yeah, yeah, that's okay. my uh, website. Yeah. Okay, and so you physically have those books in your possession so you can autograph the books for folks. Yeah, okay. I can, yeah. Okay, get an autographed copy for those of you that are listening. <laughs> I love it. Oh, <laughs> Sasha, thank you so much. This has been so fun talking with you. Um, I love the idea that it just flows out of you like that. Yeah. Uh, now, yeah. The, only, the only way that I relate is that I'm constantly writing in my head and I don't often put that on paper. I'm always spinning a tale. I'm always telling a story. 
And so no matter where we go, I'll see a character, you know, at the breakfast bar and I start, uh, you know, as everybody at the table is, is just chatting, I'm writing a story about the guy sitting at the, at the end of the bar. <laughs> Kathy, you have to write those down or like, you know, yeah. record your phone. Oh, this character is doing this right now. So that way you don't lose it. Uh -huh. you know? I, I've done that for so many years and all of that is just gone because I didn't write it down, yeah. but, but that's just something that just happens inherently in my brain all the time. And so I, you know, early on as a child, I used to think, doesn't everybody do that? <laughs> yeah. Like I, I have conversations with people that I'm not like, you know, if I could see you across the room and I'm like having a conversation with you, even though we're not like physically engaged. Uh -huh. And, you know, for me, like I was an only child. So I, I created oh, that yeah. space for myself, yeah. you know, to have those conversations and communicate with people. So, um, yeah, always lived in my head. <laughs> so I get it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Sasha, thank you so much for being with us. Sandy, thank you. Oh, thank and you, again, Sasha, for all the best. <laughs> yes. Thank you very and for those that are listening, tap into kathybinner.com and check out the Academy check out the free meetups, which this is our free meetup for the Ohio Writers Guild. And then also we have the course and we have the mastermind. And then over to Sandy, tell us one more time about Into the Springs before we go. It's in Yellow Springs, Ohio. It's for the weekend of August 4th through the 6th at the Mills Park Hotel. And just go online. And if you just type in um, Into the Springs, writersworkshop.com, Yellow Springs, Ohio, it'll pop up. So thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Sasha. Thank yes. You. And, and connect with Sasha again, uh, swansongbooks.com or mm -hmm. find her on Instagram and Facebook under swan song for books. And so with that, we are going to um, sign off until next month. And so everyone, please mark your calendars and be sure that you sign in. And I always have to look at my calendar to make sure that I say this correctly, because I do several different meetups a month and I never want to miss, you know, miss, misspeak about the actual date. And so we are always the second Tuesday at six o'clock. So the second Tuesday at six o'clock, put that on Eastern time, put that on your calendars. And it's the same zoom code that you got in tonight i don't change the code it's the same code every month and so feel free to just put that on your calendar and then join us every month and you get to hear from a different author and then i have all the replays in my academy under kathybenner.com and so you can go back and listen to all the replays of all the authors we've talked to over the last two or three years they're all stored right there and uh, and you get to hear um stories just like Sasha on how they write, when they write, and, and what makes a difference in their world. So thank you for joining us, and we'll see you again next month. Bye. All right, thank you. Okay, <laughs> bye, everyone.